Hey guys, welcome to my new video and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over the basics of Adobe Lightroom. Now I've already got a few tutorials about editing landscapes, black and white, split toning, some color enhancing and some different color effects, but I've never really gone over importing some basic key bindings and just stuff like that and the interface. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. It's going to be a bit random. It's probably not going to be too organized since I'm just doing this off the top of my head, but let's jump right into it. Um, so I'm going to be using Lightroom 4, um, it's pretty similar, except a few sliders are different in previous versions, but that's all that matters. Also, if you like this wallpaper here, I, I usually get comments on where to get my wallpapers. I'll put a link to his DeviantArt in the description, and he has a lot like this style if you like that kind of thing. Alright, so here we are in Lightroom. Now, I've got a few raw files here, which I prepared on my other screen um, before the tutorial, and these are the ones I'm going to be using for this example. So as soon as we open Lightroom here, we can see that it opens up in the library tab. And this is pretty much where all of your photos will be displayed. So these are all the ones that I have imported at the moment. Now to import a photo, you need to make sure you're in the library tab. And then all you need to do is either highlight one and just drag that in, or you can highlight all of them and drag that in. Now the difference is, I'll, I'll show you in a sec what the difference is. Uh, so here they are, here's the three photos. One's just of a house, one's of my dog, and one's of injecting colors into jelly beans. Uh, so you can see that these two here have the tick in the boxes. Now, say if I were just to drag that one in, uh, only that first photo would have the tick and this one would be grayed out like that. So pretty much the ones you drag in will be automatically checked and if you only drag one in, only the first one will be checked, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, so as we can see, both of these are checked to be imported and this one is grayed out. Now the reason for that is I already have that one imported and Lightroom doesn't let you import duplicate of raw files. Uh, so there's that, and if you want to increase the size of this, you can either use the, uh, the thumbnail slider down here, sorry, or you can double click the image and use the left and right arrow keys to pretty much go through, and you can choose to import or not there. And then you can press G or click down here to go back to the grid view. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, import both of those. So once we've got those selected, we can just click import. And you'll see it'll load up in kind of a new library window. It'll just be those two photos, and it won't be any of the other ones. Uh, so if we want to go back to all of our photos, we can just go up to here to all photographs and it'll go back to all 51 of mine. Now you can see, even though we just imported those, um, one is there and one is down there and they're not at the bottom. Now the reason for that is I sort mine by capture time. So I took that photo, you know, a couple of months back, that one about a month ago and all of these ones since. Uh, so you can pretty much sort that by added order so they would be at the bottom, um, rating and everything like that. So let's go through just organizing our images, I guess. So what you can do in here is pretty much double click on it like you did just then and you can preview um, the edits you've done to the photos. Uh, so these are the edited photos now. Um, these aren't just standard. So what you can do now is use your arrow keys to go through it and you can give these ratings if you want. So you can either click the stars down here or you can press, you know, 1 to 5 on your numpad on your keyboard. So you can see it'll set a star rating like that or you can press 0 to take the star rating off. So this is a pretty good way if you did multiple photos like for example, uh, I've got a few different photos of these leaves here. So say if one was slightly missing focus, I'd give that one a lower star rating than one that had exact focus so I know which ones I can delete and which ones I want to edit later. And it's just a quick way to organize your photos and stuff like that. Um, so moving around the uh, columns here, we can see we've got the navigator up here. Now a really useful thing with the navigator is, I'll show you in the develop tab, but another one is if you zoom in you can see this white uh, outline here appears and that's pretty much where you're zoomed into so it's a good reference guide to know pretty much where you're zoomed into I guess. Uh, so that's helpful. And you've also got these controls up here so you can fit it, fill it into the frame, go one to one scale, um, change a few different zoom options there. Uh, then we've got our all photos, quick collections and previous import obviously. And on the right hand side here we've got our histogram. Uh, we've got our quick develop settings. Now I really wouldn't recommend using these. Um, pretty much you can choose a, a preset, you can adjust the white balance, exposure, clarity and vibrance and that's pretty much it. And yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this if you want any decent kind of looking images. If we go down, we've got our metadata, which will show us, you know, when it was taken, what camera, what lens. And you can see that's also popped up on my screen here, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, so that's pretty much it. Then down the bottom here, we've got our film strip, I think I heard someone call it. And it just pretty much shows all of our photos, so we can quickly uh, view the thumbnails and go through them like that. Okay, so let's move across to the develop tab. And as you can see, 
it all looks fairly similar when it loads. There we go. And pretty much the panels didn't move or anything like that, but what's inside the panels did. Uh, so on the left here, we still got the navigator, still does the exact same thing. And what I was talking about before is if we say go to our Lightroom black and white presets, we can see if we hold our mouse over those, we can see the preview in the navigator here. And that's really useful just to see, to get a general idea of what the um, preset's going to do before you apply it. So, for example, I can say that looks kind of decent in the thumbnail. I'll apply it. And, yeah, it looks okay, I guess. Okay, now moving down here to the presets tab, um, straight away you won't have these My Mixology ones down to special effects because that is a preset pack that I did download and purchase. Uh, it's made by SLR Lounge, and if you're interested, I will put a link in the description. I think it's about $100. Um, it was $75 for like the first week or something if you help promote it, but I think it's gone back up to $100, and it's definitely worth the money. Um, if you edit in Lightroom a lot, um, you really can't go wrong with it. Um, so moving down, you will have all of these Lightroom ones though. But I tend to not use these except for the black and white tone presets, especially this cream tone one. I quite like the effect that gives. Um, but yeah, moving on. Uh, if we go down, we've got snapshots. Now what a snapshot is, is pretty much saves all of the editing on an image. So say if we like this edit that I did of my dog, and this is the final one, but we want to try something else as well. So what I'd do is I'd press Control N. And you'll see this box pops up. We can just call this one, or you can name it whatever you want. You can call it first edit, whatever. And then what we can do is reset this, and then just do you know a random edit, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And let's just say that's our magnificent edit that we're happy with. We can press Control N, press two, and reset that again. We can do that as many times as we want. Now we can see we can go back to either of those edits at any point in time. It's a really great feature if you're thinking of doing multiple edits on the same photo but you don't want to you know lose what you're doing. Uh, and then of course you can right click, delete those or rename them and yeah. Uh, then of course we've got our history and that's pretty much it for this side. Down the bottom we've still got the same film strip thing. On the right we've got all of our effects sliders and pretty much all of our adjustments and how we edit our photos. I'm not going to go over this because I do have multiple tutorials which I will put you know links on the screen to the different ones if you're interested in those or if there's something you want to learn how to do uh, leave a comment and I'll get onto that. Now just over a few key bindings alright so as you can see up in the top left here I've got my camera settings and what camera and lens I use and everything like that and if you want this uh, by default it'll be blank there won't be anything there if you press I on your keyboard uh, the first one will pop up if you press it again another one will pop up press it again and it will disappear. Now I did customize what mine says and to do this you go view, view options and you'll see you can uh, change everything there so you can you know just have it say the focal length if you want and yeah so that's pretty much that. Now if you want to display your photos to say your friends or your family or even a client I guess and you just want to do it straight through Lightroom uh, if your computer's fast and it's not going to lag what you can do is you can pretty much just um, minimize all of these tabs and if you press the L key on your keyboard, and you get rid of that of course, you can see it kind of dims the background, it makes the picture stand out. And if you press it again, you, uh, it'll fully make it black, press it again and it'll come back. So that's a nice way to just you know go through your photos without uh, having any distracting background stuff. Um, you can also change the dim brightness in the options if you want to do that. Uh, so that's pretty much it, that kind of covers most of the basic stuff. Now if there's anything in particular that you want to know, feel free to leave a comment. And yeah, sorry, like I said, it's a bit random, this is all just off the top of my head, but I'll put links to all my specific tutorials and my DeviantArt so you can see my favorite photos if you're interested. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.